Hi, it's Dustin Berg with Pro AV School. This video is the world's simplest and most basic Crestron Fusion setup. Uh, basically, I'm taking a RMC3 test processor that I have and linking it to my test Fusion server just to demonstrate at the most basic level how you would set this up. So, I've created a basic program here and I'm just going to kind of walk through what I've got. So I started a new program. I'm going to go to the configure view and show you basically what you need to do for the the, uh, the fusion connection. So under Ethernet, I've uh, randomly selected an IP ID. I've chosen 10. Um, you can use pretty much whatever you want, providing that it's not u in use on your processor in another slot or something like that. This is the only program running here, so I know that 10 is good. And what we, what you would do to add that is just double click on an open slot and this opens up and you can actually just type F for fusion and what you want is the fusion room and just bring that in you can also find it here on the side somewhere I have trouble with this myself because it's I, I don't know how things are classified sometimes so I have trouble finding things but I know what they're called so I do it that way uh, so basically I have this fusion room I haven't done any config on this side I just pressed F6 the address is the actual loopback address so that means it is a TCP IP server that's waiting for a connection essentially from somewhere else and that will be the fusion server that goes out and connects to this this room and I haven't done anything else there notice I don't have a touch panel in this program it's just a bare bare bones test program I'm just going to show basically setting and resetting a latch and watching it in fusion so, you've got this block here that came in, and you need to give it a name. This is a unique identifier in Fusion. When it's discovered, you can actually go and change it after the fact in Fusion. Uh, it's mostly just for the discovery process. This instance ID is, I think it's called a GUID as well. It's a unique identifier for this specific room. Now if you're going to reuse the same compiled code in a bunch of rooms, which is something that I do quite often these days, you need to use some sort of a remapping utility to to change this, basically so that every time it runs on a different processor slot or a different processor, it has a slightly different unique ID. And um, I'm not going to get into that in this video, I guess, because it's, it's a little outside the scope. I'll just show you quickly where it is, just so we know. It's under Crestron Modules, and I normally just go All Modules and Fusion Fusion GUID Update Helper 3 Series only it would be the one that I would use. And you have to pick the processor type. And just follow the directions essentially in the, uh, the help file. It tells you how you need to, for basic usage, it tells you how you need to run through the console symbol. But again, this is supposed to be the simple version, so I digress. Let's go back to this. Single room. So I've got that in there. I'm going to delete this because I don't need it. And then my program, I've done something very basic. I have a set reset latch. Turn system on, turn system off. System on feedback, system off feedback. And I've just created two conditions to turn it on and turn it off. So either from a panel, which I'll just press F2, it doesn't exist. I haven't put it in the system. Um, we'll just simulate those in Toolbox or from Fusion to turn it on and turn it off. And we'll connect these symbols, or these signals, sorry, and the feedback over to this room symbol. So I'm just going to expand this. And we're just using the digitals, basically. The system on feedback comes right from my latch. Press F3 to identify. Turn system on is a pulse that's generated as a condition from Fusion when you specifically trigger it, either through an action in Fusion or th just through the console. I'll show you kind of the basic of how you would trigger it from the console. And it's just going to be one of the conditions that changes the state. So you go ahead and compile that, which I've already done to save time. And you load it to your processor with Toolbox. And so I've got it running on slot. Yeah, let's just see. Slot one is my test program. Here's my RMC3. Here's the IP address of my processor. 
192.168.1.97. And I've also got Toolbox um, Simple Debugger connected here just to, to watch for changes. So I'm just going to move this window around here. And now get into my Fusion server. So Fusion server is accessed through the IP or the hostname slash fusion slash web client. I think since I've already logged in, it probably won't ask me to log in again. Yeah, it just goes to, to that view. So if you've never used Fusion before, it has three main modes. There's monitoring, configuration, or setup. These other two, energy management and reports, are also kind of modes, but the, t the two that we typically use are monitoring and setup. Configuration is more of the, the server config itself, and you'll probably have uh, somebody from the Fusion support group or something helping you set that up. So basically when I'm doing stuff like this, I like to keep use a tabbed browser and have two tabs. One for the config view, or the mo sorry, the monitoring view, it shows you there, and one for the setup view. So I basically I would just click here and use my middle mouse button. I use Google Chrome to open up that other tab as a new new tab. So I've got these two set up and now I need to discover my processor. So I'm going to go to setup and I'm going to go symbol discover. Um, it gave me an error there that says you can't perform it on the selected object. Basically you just need to click a node here. I'm just going to put it under room or root, sorry. And it will just fall under this this tree. So symbol discover. You can go ahead and scan IP addresses. Since I know the address of my processor, I'm just going to type it in here. And it will say that it updates the database and everything. And you can't stop it. So yes. So now it's going out and trying to find the Fusion processor. Or sorry, the processor that's running Fusion. Now interesting to note at this point we haven't uh, I think it actually automatically discovers it but if I look at it now on the IP table I think it'll still show the Fusion symbol as offline. It takes a bit of time to kind of sync things up. So here it discovered my my room and my test room is the name that I actually had in Simple Windows under this. And this is where you could change it to if you wanted. I believe you could, yeah, you could just modify it. I'll just keep it small. So that's in there now. And it should probably just show up under this tree now. I just need to obviously refresh this tab because it's not going to push back changes that way. And now we see my test room and renamed as well. So right now it's saying it's offline. We'll just give it a bit of time here because it should update itself automatically and just show it as online. When I did this test before I started doing this, I made sure that it would actually work. So here it came online. And basically I didn't do anything. I discovered it and it just populated itself in and there it goes. Um, so the next step is finding where I put my toolbox, which is here somewhere. And maybe what I'll do is I'll organize these two side by side. So right now you can see that it is, oh sorry, it's going to zoom out a little bit. System power is off. And it's system off feedback. So if I go here, click on it, I want to turn it on. So you see that pulse come through right away in Simple Debugger. The feedback didn't come right away because it's only polling every... Th there's an interval and I, I'm sure it's something that could be tweaked as well in the deep configuration. 
but the interval seems to be maybe around five seconds or so for changes to go back but control events because they're basically events that are initiated rather than feedback that just comes from a poll it's going to happen pretty quick so now it's on I can go ahead and from panel turn system off and in a moment here we'll see that reflect here Next time I do one of these demos, I'm going to do some Jeopardy music while we're waiting for the states to change. But you can see there, it, it changed it. So this is a very, very, very simplified demo. Um, if you've never worked with Fusion before, um, as I hadn't, I didn't really know kind of the first thing about it. So that's kind of an intro to, to how you might get things set up and kind of have a bit of an understanding of, of how you would set up and discover stuff. Now. The extension to that is, like I kind of showed a little bit, working with multiple processors or adding additional parameters. Um, there's the Fusion SSI modules that Crestron has created that allow you to um, update a lot of parameters and keep track of things like display um, times, like amount of usage and stuff like that. And the module and the programming already takes care of that for you. You just need to basically drop the symbol in and connect it where relevant. Um, the other thing that is interesting, I talked about the, the GUID updater, and then stuff like um, like events and also scheduling, I guess. You can you can have a scheduling awareness module right in um, in your simple Windows program, so that you could actually use the Crestron um, touch panel to act like a scheduling panel, even if it's not. Uh, you'd have to create your own interface and everything like that. So you can kind of take it where you want from here. You can create alerts and send emails and all that stuff. But the first thing is basically you have to get the room talking to Fusion. So that's it for this video. Um, for more videos and more information, just go to uh, proavschool.com and look up Crestron. Thanks.